Welcome back. In this video, we're going to take a look at Go modules. Now, in a previous video, we had talked about Go path, but since Go version 1.13, module mode has become the default for development. Now, with these changes come some advantages. Uh, for instance, with this dependency tracking, we can keep track of the version of the modules we import as well as the version of the modules they import. Uh, teams can be certain that they're all working with the exact same code base. Uh, for instance, if they're importing a package and one of them has a, a older or newer version of that, that could cause some issues. And we can also avoid uh, breaking changes. Um, these, pack these modules are constantly being updated. And if we want to use a specific version we know that works, we can do that and avoid um, you know, some breaking change out there that'll break our code at the worst possible time. And we can also make sure that um, what we expect is, you know, bit for bit what we expect it to be. You know, we can avoid, you know, some kind of copy or transmission error or, you know, maybe some malicious attacker that's sitting between us and where we're downloading it from. So anyway, in the past, uh, we had to create our modules, you know, inside a directory that was pointed to by GoPath. And to show that we don't have to do that anymore, I am actually working with my module on the desktop. And we're gonna be creating a go.mod file and a go.sum file. Now to show you, you don't actually need that for everything. Here's the built-in function print. So I'll show you that still runs even though we haven't created a uh, go.mod file yet. And as let's say, if we wanted to use the uh, golang core package fumped uh, function print line, you know that will work as well. Now, if that didn't work for you, uh, you want, want to make sure that you have your Go root set uh, correctly. So let's go go envir env for envir environment variables. Uh, and let's see, go root. So for instance, I have I installed uh, go at c program file slash go. And as I take a look at that, yeah, I am, this is where I have it installed, uh, c program slash program file slash go. And you can even look at inside the source directory inside of there. You know, there's our Golang core packages. So here's our, our fumped package, for instance. But anyway, if we wanted to uh, bring in an external package, well, we can't just We can add it to the import, but that's still not going to be enough. So if I go run main.go, there's no required module provides package github.com slash common nighthawk slash go figure. Now, if you're not familiar uh, with these imports, uh, github.com is just the site where we're pulling it from. Um, so where it's located, and then it would be the name of the next thing, like common nighthawk, you know, the name of the group or corporation or the person, you know, who's holding that repository and the repository who created that repository and then the uh, name of that repo, you know, usually some kind of descriptive name. But anyway, we're going to have to create a, a go.mod file so that we can run this. So, um, and if you don't have this yet, um, you need to make sure to use the uh, go get command. I already have it, so uh, we're good to go. But if you don't, it'll go ahead and download that uh, for you. But anyway, like I said, it doesn't run, so we're gonna have to use the uh, go mod init and put that in there. Now I'm putting a little bit, this seem, This is probably looking a little bit longer since this is uh, since I'm gonna be putting it up um, on GitHub, this is the proper way to do it. But anyway, let's just do that. Let's just run that real quick. We'll show you what it does. So. Go creating a new go.mod file. As you can see, we have a new mod file that just popped up over here. And uh, to add module requirements and sums, we need to run go mod tidy. So it's giving us a little hint what we need to do next. If we take a look at that go.mod file, uh, we have uh, up here our module path, it's module, and then this is what we put in right down here. So basically, you know, origin where it's at, which is this part, since I'm putting up in a repository, it's gonna be a little longer. So I got it kind of buried in that repo. And then of course we control, you know, 
what descriptive name we want to give it. Uh, if you're not putting it up on a repo, I mean, more than likely it might be like, say, if it's uh, in a folder named demo or something, it might be demo slash my module or something like that, be something much shorter. And of course, you know, which version of Go we are running. So this does not have any of the dependencies um, in here yet. It has a line that says require, it doesn't have those yet, and we're going to have to run Go Tidy. Uh, go tidy. So if we, uh, if we try and run Go, run main.go, uh, no required module. Um, so if you don't have it, make sure you run go get, but let's go ahead and go mod or module, run tidy. And this is gonna go through our code and it's gonna look for dependencies that it doesn't have in that file yet. So if we get that, okay, so it found some, looks like it found and there we go. Okay, so as you can see, require has added this and it has a version and we have a sum file as well. So it'll keep track of which version we need to keep uh, to run. So if he changes this, you know, that's fine. We're running this version. If we wanna to upgrade to the new version, we can do that as well. But we, if we know this works for us, we can avoid breaking changes, say if they update that repo. Um, anyway, we also have our go sum file. So we have our, uh, Tells us you know which modules and we have some you know which version of cryptographic hash here. So the nice thing about this with cryptographic hash is if say if there was someone between uh, them and us and they're trying to affect our code, well if they change that code that we're downloading, well it's going to change this hash. So if it's not what we expect, well it's and they change that. Uh, that code, well, it's it's drastically going to change. It's going to change that hash. That hash, and we're going to know it's been uh, manipulated. So, anyway, we go down here and let's go run main.go. Ah, uh, there we go. So that one printed hello world. That printed hello world, and then we printed hello world using um, you know this go figure package. So. Um, you might wonder uh, when we run go tidy, how do we know what uh, dependencies it's going to pull if there's different uh, different versions out there? So it's going to use the let's just uh, take a look at that. So it's going to uh, it's going to look for the latest uh, version, and by that um, the latest tagged stable, you know, version or you know, at least you know if, if it doesn't have that, just whatever the latest is. So it's going to look for a stable version. Um, and let's say, uh, for instance, we want to actually get rid of this. Um, how would we we go about that? So let's just go ahead and get rid of that. And notice you now we're going to have you know, a little bit of an issue here. Go figure is not used in the module. Oh, that's nice. It even tells us not used in the module. So run go and go. So there's an issue there, but if we want to get rid of that little deal there, let's go mod tidy. And this should remove this require because it's going to go back through our code. So if you added something or if, you t if you've taken something away, it's going to tidy that up. It's going to go ahead and add or remove dependencies as required. Okay, as you can see, the require has been removed. So um, one thing uh, to be aware of when we ran uh, go mod init, you want to make sure you're inside the root of your module. As you can see, I'm inside of uh, desktop slash my module. Uh, you just want to have you only want to run that in one place. Um, even if we're pulling in modules, uh, we don't want to uh, run go mod init in any of those. Just right at the root of our module, you know, inside of my module in this instance. Um, so you only want to have that in one place. That's just a heads up. Um, well, I hope you liked the hope you liked the video. Um, went ahead and added uh, another link for uh, 
I believe it's get me a coffee. Uh, if you want to contribute to that, uh, much appreciated if you do. Um, anyway, uh, really like uh, a lot of the participation in the channel lately and I'd like to thank everybody. So I'll see you guys in the next one.